Thank you very much for inviting me. As you say, all the way from, from Sweden, uh, from the south of Sweden. I work at the Swedish Agricultural University at Alnap, which is close to Malmo and Lund in the, in the very most southern part. If I would go to the north, some 2,300 kilometers north, I would find the, the most northern like avenues. Uh, if I would have gone south, I would have come to Rome instead. So yes, Sweden is a, is a vast country, countryside. Previously, I've been working at the National Transport Administration, and my background is uh, a geographer and working uh, for a number of years in the cultural heritage sector, uh, working with uh, landscape history issues. And I've been invited here to talk about avenues in Sweden and specifically uh, management and conservation. And avenues in Sweden, uh, you could in general say they are separated in three different categories regarding ownership and that is that we have avenues along state roads which is uh, approximately one third of the avenue and it is an approximation there are no real science statistics for it there are calculations uh, that would comprise about 160,000 trees one third is privately owned uh, avenues along private roads and that is uh, roads leading to farms so fa the, the avenues uh, at farmers uh, places and the last uh, third would be at the local authority level so at town level you could say and large villages they are uh, managed by the local authority So just a few uh, more words about the cultural heritage uh, uh, which uh, sets my base a, a little bit more. Uh, many avenues have a high heritage value as historically they have organized and contrib contributed to shaping the territory and that is why I think avenues are interesting historically. And for example, uh, the avenue always have a starting point and a target or end point. And this plays in the landscape often a border, a house, a church maybe, demarks that you're now close to your journey's end. As you can see on this uh, photo here, depicting the landed estate of Nesbeholm and a short avenue leading from the border to the neighboring village of Nesby. Uh, the avenue confirms an event in the process of landscape management. An avenue does not exist on its own. It has a connection to the organizational whole. You would not find an avenue planted randomly. Uh, it is planted when something else happens in the landscapes, so therefore it depends upon uh, the landscape. So you need to have a landscape perspective in order to understand the avenue. This uh, old map of uh, Gedsholm, for instance, shows uh, how the uh, avenue starts at the old border and uh, uh, at the figure K, and a little bit on the left of that is a straight border, and that is a planned new border. And if I would look at a map from 1800, you would see that the avenue has been prolonged some 30 meters to this new border. So the avenue uh, follows, so to speak, the, the landscape. So what type of trees do we have in Sweden? Uh, through time, different types of trees have been planted, and the differences are depending on which period of time, region, which type of landscape, that is, if it's a landscape of landed estates, a landscape close to towns, or a landscape of villages. In the very north of Sweden, uh, birch trees is the most common type of tree. 
but other trees can be used uh, and are used as well. In the more southern part of Sweden, uh, we have an avenue history uh, regarding type of trees which is comparable to many of the European countries uh, such as Denmark, Poland, Germany, the Netherlands and others. And the grand type of trees such as elm, ash, uh, horse, chestnut, and as this picture uh, uh, shows, lime, is quite common. And, during the, uh, and these are from uh, uh, the 17th century, the oldest, uh, but more common, they are being planted and in the middle of the 18th century, the, the oldest ones. The most common type of tree uh, in this period, uh, that is in the 17th and 18th century, is probably willow. And uh, this is not only in the rural landscape, which consists of farms, this is also uh, next to landed estates and also close to farms. Uh, willow was the most uh, common type of tree. And also poplar uh, trees, black poplar trees. Uh, how have the trees been managed? When you discuss avenues, often you reflect on the type of tree and uh, maybe not so much uh, how it has been managed. And of course, the type of tree is interesting, but I think uh, equally important is the management of, of avenues. And it is likely that most avenue trees in the 17th, 18th, and 19th century were regularly pollarded due to both aesthetic and practical reasons. The beautiful landscape was the ordered landscape. Dark forests and natural swamps were seen as ugly and not desirable. And the same reasons can be understood regarding trees. The regularly cut and well-shaped crown was uh, seen as the most beautiful. And if you uh, see on this photo uh, of this 250-year-old Lime Avenue, you can see that it has been regularly cut at a level of maybe two, two and a half meters height. And it ended around 1880. And that is uh, quite common. So you wanted the free space uh, over the, uh, the road. And this is another way of, uh, of managing uh, the trees. And this type of management uh, would be seen at the landed estates, not, not uh, at the farms, so to speak. At the farms, you would see this type of cutting. But both have both uh, aesthetic and practical uh, reasons. By cutting the trees regularly, man showed who decided in nature, man over nature. The cut branches with leaves were a sought after product in both the landed estate and the farms. The branches could, for instance, be used for fuel and the fencing, whereas the leaves were used uh, as fodder to the cattle. Avenues had, of course, other practical functions as well with the trees being planted along a road. The avenue gave the landscape an appealing sight and the traveler a beautiful journey, it is stated. The two most common practical functions was highlighting the road when it was snowy weather and when it was dark. The avenue trees then give you an optic guide on how, how the road goes. This is of course also useful uh, during heavy rain, flooding, and as we've seen previously today, sand and earth storms are coming closer to, to, to today. Uh, the history of avenues in Sweden, you could say after World War II, lies probably somewhere between in the, mid, uh, in the middle of good and bad. Some avenues were cut uh, when roads were widened, but otherwise not much happened. A few minor regional studies have been done investigating the development and it would seem as if old avenues have been replaced by new ones, but necessarily not at the same place. The studies indicate that the number of avenues have increased a little or are about the same 
and the same result can be found regarding total length. However, the average, average length of an avenue has decreased. This means that the avenue landscape has become more fragmented. So we have more avenues, but they do not have the same length. They're not being connected as they were originally. Uh, reasons for this uh, development uh, could be the fact that Sweden has never had the huge number of avenues as some countries in continental Europe. Avenues planted to new farms along new private roads uh, in the period 1850 to 1920 were not affected as much uh, as these were private and were seen as something positive which gave the farm a good status. Old avenues along roads leading up to landed estates from the period 1750 to 1850 were also left alone after the war, at least to start with. The reason for this is that they often are situated in a rural scenic landscape with not so much traffic. However, as many of these roads after the 1940s became state roads, the management and responsibility were changed and the road authority deemed many of these avenues as a cause for traffic accidents, mainly due to the fact that they were old and large branches now and then fell on the road. This is not surprising as the avenue trees uh, at that stage were about 200 years old. A moderate uh, branch clearance uh, would be a good idea, but often it was cleared a little bit too much as this uh, picture shows. And in the 1960s and 1970s, uh, often the entire crown was uh, taken away. And this was done in numerous uh, avenues, saving the avenue uh, from being cut. But now today, 50 years later, uh, the trees have not been managed since that day, and they have large risks of uh, large branches falling uh, onto the road and uh, often the entire tree can, can, be, can now be cut down uh, due to uh, security measures. Like many other, uh, like many, uh, other European countries, uh, Sweden has been greatly affected by the Dutch elm disease which uh, started uh, uh, or developed rapidly in the 1990s and uh, today only a few elm avenues exist uh, most of them have, have been cut and this uh, problem you could say that uh, uh, the disease of uh, elm trees and now we have the disease of horse chestnut and, and ash tree of course as well together with uh, the trees being quite old and uh, together with the zero vision, which was implemented in Sweden uh, in the 1990s, uh, started a debate about avenues in Sweden. Uh, saving old avenues, planting new avenues were discussed and questioned. Uh, so you had a little crisis, you could say. What direction would, would we take? And uh, one result was that, uh, one important result was that the avenues are a part of our cultural history. Uh, they cannot be removed due to the zero vision. It is not the driver's fault uh, if the tree, uh, uh, it is not the tree's fault that they are there. Uh, the elm uh, avenues uh, were often replanted with lime trees uh, and to start with, uh, uh, because of the zero vision, they were planted uh, quite far away from the road. Uh, five meters, ten meters uh, were not, were not uh, were rare. And this created an entirely new architecture. This method was not well received, and after a few years it was abandoned. Instead, you try to plant it as it had been. You try to uh, uh, have meetings between traffic security and cultural heritage. And 
looked uh, and had a, and after discussions, uh, this could be the result. This is uh, in uh, a little bit south of Stockholm, a, a very a very small row with black black poplar trees, uh, and the stick re represents the uh, the new uh, position of the tree. So depending on uh, what type of landscape, what type of road, uh, what type of tree, uh, what type of status, quality, uh, and so on, the trees were given uh, a new position uh, that could be the, exactly the same or it could be a little bit further away. It, it is decided from place to place. Uh, this way of respecting uh, avenues and at the same time working with the Zero Vision, uh, I've heard from other people uh, says uh, that it's un unique for Sweden. In fact, when you read about the Zero Vision, avenue trees are not mentioned. Apart from the discussion some 20, 25 years ago, there's not been any debate about avenue trees and Zero Vision in Sweden. Trees, and, uh, trees or avenue trees are not included in the official statistics of people being killed or injured in traffic because there are so few. This does not mean that the avenue trees never have been cut down. On the contrary, many of old avenue trees are gone today, but not, during, not due to cerevision. They've been cut because they were dropping large branches due to old age or some disease. When avenues are mentioned in reports uh, regarding traffic analysis, they are uh, seen as a positive landscape element that should not decrease in numbers as they have a high biological diversity. And one reason for this is the Convention on uh, Biological Diversity, which originates from the Rio conference in 1992. And this uh, convention is signed by 150 leaders uh, countries and in Sweden uh, this uh, was adopted in the law in the environmental code in 1999 and uh, avenue trees are uh, treated in this environmental code and protected due to its biological diversity. Uh, dispensation to cut dangerous branches can be given if they are danger to traffic security and if it is necessary, uh, the entire tree can be cut. And now often, uh, the cultural historical value of the avenue is also uh, recognized. Other types of uh, measures for improving management are courses, seminars, uh, and this has been given to both uh, people working at the road authorities, such as this, this one, uh, and also uh, to farmers, which uh, this uh, photo depicts. And this type of, you could say, collaboration, I think, is very important, both nationally and uh, internationally, nationally, as we have uh, an example today. Uh, so instead of poor management, which can happen sometimes, we hope for uh, improving management and good management instead. Thank you very much.